I'm Enzo Hausecker, an engineer on the SDK team at Definity. Folks have heard a lot about the internet computer's recent introduction of token economics, but probably still have questions like, what are cycles, why do I need them, how do I get them, and how do I use them? So to remind everyone, cycles are tokens that developers use to pay for the computation and storage they consume on the internet computer. From a developer's standpoint, their computation and storage requirements are defined in WebAssembly. That WebAssembly can be bundled into an interoperable compute unit called a canister and uploaded to the internet computer. Because every canister consumes at least some resources, canisters must be periodically charged up with cycles to maintain operation. Today, we introduce the concept of a wallet canister to help developers manage this flow. Not to be confused with a wallet to manage one's private key, wallet canisters build on the low-level system API provided by the internet computer's WebAssembly-based virtual machine. In practice, they are just a thin layer of abstraction around this API, but the end-user experience amounts to a fully managed data store for cycles and other tokens. With a wallet canister, you can easily view balances of cycles and other tokens, send cycles and other tokens to other wallet canisters, view recent transaction history, manage custodianship, and forward arbitrary calls to other canisters carrying cycles or other tokens in a message payload. Let's see what this looks like in practice. Now, I've already installed the latest version of the Internet Computer SDK. We can verify that with the FX dash dash version. And I've made two applications for access to Sodium on behalf of the fictitious developers Alice and Bob. The application process has completed, and both Alice and Bob have become controllers of their respective wallet canisters. I've taken note of the canister identifiers provided in their onboarding emails and aliased them accordingly. Let's query their cycle balances to see how many they have. So Alice has got, looks like just over 5 trillion cycles. And Bob's got about the same. Uh, now, cycles function like a stablecoin, so one trillion cycles is about one Swiss franc, so both Alice and Bob have just over five Swiss francs. Uh, let's go ahead and transfer one trillion cycles from Alice to Bob. First, let's just remind ourselves of the canister identifier associated with Bob's wallet. And now we can invoke the send cycles method. Uh, which takes two arguments, um, the canister identifier of the wallet to receive the funds, so that's Bob, and the number of cycles that we want to transfer here, and we said that that's going to be one trillion. So now that that's completed, uh, let's go ahead and query the cycle balances one more time to just see how many they have. So we see Alice has got it's like one trillion less, and Bob has got one trillion more. Of course, minus a small number of cycles that were consumed by performing this transaction. Now, you may be like me and prefer to do much of this from the command line, but you don't need to. User interfaces can be deployed alongside wallet canisters to provide much more interactive user experiences. Using WebAuthn security, we can register hardware authenticators, such as the YubiKey I've got here with me, that will allow you to sign transactions from a web browser in the same way as DFX. To start here, just click Generate Registration and touch your device to activate it. Now, I create a device alias as prompted here. Let's just say YubiKey. And Copy this command and let Alice run it in her terminal. And now, uh, just going back, just click on Connect Device. And as the owner of the YubiKey, I'm now authorized as a, as a custodian. I can send transactions from Alice's wallet or simply view transaction history. Uh, here, for example, is the one trillion cycles that Alice just sent to Bob. Now, the internet computer uses a canister pay model. This is very different from the user pay model. It means that by default, and unless otherwise caught by built-in denial of service mitigation techniques, when a user sends a message to a canister, the canister who receives that message pays for all the computation and storage associated with it. And the user is not expected to include cycles or other tokens in the message payload. This provides for a much better user experience 
because it means that canisters can do things like serve user interfaces directly into your web browser without having to install weird browser extensions. But as you can imagine, there are use cases in which you may want to include cycles or other tokens in the message payload. Wallet Canisters introduces concept of call forwarding to handle this. Now I have a third canister here, uh, written in Rust. This is not a wallet canister, but it does expose a method called cycle balance. Additionally, uh, it has a method called hello that simply replies with the string hello. This is basically just a hello world canister, uh, but with one unique, uh, with one unique exception, uh, this hello method will go ahead and extract cycles out of a message payload that is sent to it, and it will keep those cycles for itself. Now we can call this hello canister directly with dfx canister all, and then just give it the ID of that um, the ID of that canister and the method that we want to invoke, which is hello. We see here that it returns the string hello. Um, this is just a standard call, so there is no, uh, no cycles included in the message payload there. Um, and we can also invoke that cycle balance method as well. So we see here that this canister currently has a cycle balance of, uh, looks like just over 88 billion cycles. Um, now using call forwarding, uh, I'm going to invoke that hello method again, but I'm going to include with it some cycles in the message payload that that hello method will keep for itself, for, will keep for that canister. Um, so first I'm going to, uh, again, using call forwarding, call Alice's canister and then have Alice's canister call hello. So the syntax there is uh, dfx uh, canister call, and then we'll call Alice's wallet. And we'll invoke the call forwarding method, which is called call. And it takes four arguments here, which is the identifier of the canister that we want to call, uh, the method that we want to invoke. Uh, any arguments, there are none actually in this case. Um, and the number of cycles that we want to include in the message payload. So that's going to be one trillion. Let's include one trillion cycles in the message payload. Now the reply here is um, just a raw byte sequence. Uh, this is actually by design. Uh, you may recognize the uh, trailing five bytes here though as the string hello. Uh, so it's just the response is actually just encoded here. Um, but the uh, forwarded call has actually returned here as expected. Um, and if I go back and query the cycle balance for that hello canister, uh, you'll see it's increased by one trillion. So it looks like we've got one trillion, 88 billion and change. Uh, so yeah, right there with call forwarding, uh, your wallet canisters can become your entry point into the system for a wide variety of use cases. So there you have it. Wallet canisters let you view balances of cycles and other tokens, send cycles and other tokens to other wallet canisters, view recent transaction history, manage custodianship, and forward arbitrary calls to other canisters carrying cycles or other tokens in a message payload. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the Sodium Network.